Today, let's look at how to calculate your commission at eXp Realty. I'm going to give you the exact step-by-step, line-by-line cost on how it is actually calculated at eXp. Now, I'm doing this for several reasons. Number one, if you're an agent that has partnered with me, thank you and congratulations on being part of the group. This question is going to come up. It has for a lot of the agents that I've partnered with, so I want to go ahead and address this right now so you see how to appropriately interpret the commission disbursement that ends up happening when you make a real estate transaction. So that's number one. Number two, there's plenty of agents within eXp that don't have this support. So there's a lot of agents that hit my DMs, that call me, that reach out, that want some additional information on how things work within eXp because they don't have this type of support within their own organization and that's completely fine. I help wherever I can. And then number three, there's people outside of eXp, there's agents outside of eXp that want this inside information. So that's exactly why I'm making this video right now. So you see the commission disbursement. So you see how to actually calculate your commission with real life numbers. So there's no guessing. So with that being said, let's share the screen real quick and let's assume the following. So let's assume that this is a real estate transaction. Let's assume that the sales price was 240, the sale commission was 3%, and that means that the gross revenue is $7,200. That's a basic calculation that every single agent can make. No different than any other brokerage out there. So this is what you can expect from the buyer side, let's just say. So let's, let's take it one step further. Let's take it and make it a bit more complex because it's in those nuances, it's in those rabbit holes that we learn the most about a company. So I want to give um, I want to give the scenario. Let's just say this is, let's just say this was a a referral. Let's go with a referral that came to um, not came to me. Let's just say somebody reached out. Hey, I want to buy a house in Dallas. Okay, well I don't work Dallas that closely, so let me get you with one of my preferred agents. Let's just say her name is Elizabeth, and she is gonna take on that referral. Awesome. So I reach out to Elizabeth. Hey, Elizabeth, I would like 20% of this referral if you would kindly work with this amazing buyer. Yes, absolutely, no problem. So in this scenario, we're looking at 20% referral for me. And then of course that 80% is for Elizabeth and her organization. So for this example, let's just say that Elizabeth is also within eXp Realty because this will actually just simplify things. All right, so that's the scenario. We have a buyer, they end up purchasing a property for this amount, there's the sale commission, and I, as myself, am receiving 20% of the transaction, and then the 80% goes to the agent that actually worked. That's a real life scenario, that's something that you can actually digest, because again, it's in these real life um, examples that you that's more meaningful to us because this is what happens in real estate. So I think we can understand that, now let's go. So percentage of the transaction that's coming in this example coming to me, let's say 20% of the transaction is coming to me. So this means that 20% of the deal means uh, $1,440. So how do I get to this? I multiply 20% times this because that's the total amount of the pie. The rest amount of the pie, the rest amount of the commission goes to Elizabeth because she did the transaction. Does that make sense? So let me know in the comment section down below if this is making sense. There's no bonus, there's no concession, so there's no additional commission. There's also no rebates or con concessions going to the buyer to help with closing costs or anything like that. So those are, those are zero at this time. Now there could be bonuses, there could be concessions, but I'm just showing you what would ultimately be calculated and where would it be calculated within eXp so you didn't have to guess. All right, so with that being said, the commission amount before taxes is that amount, 1,440. Commission after inside referrals. Inside referrals was if we did a co-listing as an example, that's what that means right there. Happens to be the same. And then the agent split before expenses. So it happens to be the same. All right, so that's what we have. So again, it's 20% of the actual transaction because this is a referral for me. Elizabeth takes the 80%. Now. EXP commission. So in this example, I have not capped. So let's pause for a quick second. At EXP, the split is 80-20. 80% for the agent, 20% for the brokerage. 
So you don't, um, you, um, that's your split until you cap at $16,000. So after you cap, then you're going to receive a hundred percent of the commission. So that's where that's coming from. So as far as the EXP commission is concerned, EXP is entitled 20% off of this transaction off from me specifically. Elizabeth is going to be treated differently because she may or may not have capped. This is the percentage of the transaction. So notice everything is made in, um, a, uh, everything is treated as one, if you will, but everyone is treated individually, if that makes sense. So the transaction is one and each individual is different. So had I already capped, then this would be zero for me personally, because I've already capped, but, um, but that's not the case. So here it's going to be 288 divided by that. That's going to come up to 20%. So again, the split at EXP Realty is 80-20. So I think that we're okay up until now, but if you need some further elaboration, comment down below. I'm happy to do that. All right, so let's go to the next slide so we can talk about several items. Notice the risk management fee and the broker review fee. Don't worry about this for right now because we have actually not capped. So because this has already been taken out, so I have not capped at EXP in this example. So that means that 20% of my, 20% uh, of the commission that's entitled to me goes to EXP. So it's 80, 20. If I had not, if I, if I had capped, then, then we're talking about the cap transaction fee right here. So the transaction fee is $250. But in this case, since I haven't capped, we take this number. It's either or, right? So if I've capped, then we just see a number right here. Um, but since I haven't, we're talking about the 20% over there. Now the risk management fee and the broker review the risk management fee per transaction is $40. So how does this, how, why is this $8? So this is 20% off of that $40 because I got 20% of the transaction. The broker review is $25. Well, this is 20% off of that as well. So that's where we're coming up with these numbers. That's why they are the way that they are. So is that making sense? So we take a proportion since my portion of the pie is 20%, then the fees are 20% as well for me. So it's not the entire $40, it's not the entire $25 for the broker review, and it's not the entire amount for the risk management fee. So it's proportionate to the amount of deal that I get. And then we get to the mentor fee. If I was part of the mentor, the mentee, mentee, a mentee mentor program, then I would, there would be a fee right here. If you're part of the mentee men, a mentor program, then your first three transactions, you are at a 60 40 split as opposed to 80 20. Because if you're part of the mentee mentor program, chances are that you need some additional support, which is completely understandable. You're new to the industry, so you need a mentor to help you along with your transactions. So for the first three transactions, it's going to be 60 40 as opposed to 80 20. So of course, uh, in this, in this scenario, I just went ahead and put zero because I'm um, in this scenario, I, um, I am not in the uh, mentor mentee program and in real life, I'm not part of the mentor mentee program. So it wouldn't be, um, it wouldn't be an issue. All right. So that's where we get the mentor fee. So in this scenario, it's $0 and now we have the total deduction. So again, total deductions is taking what's due to EXP from my, my part of the equation and then adding my percentage or my proportion of the risk management fee or the ENO and the broker review. All right. So it comes out to the agent net commission of 1139. Now I hope that you've been following along and I know that if you're brand new to real estate, this is all new to you and that's completely okay. But again, as a reminder, EXP agents, you have to know this, where your money is going because it matters. But then also, if you're coming into eXp Realty, this is the stuff that you need. You don't need just the fluff and puff and all that stuff. This is the math. This is the exact breakdown. So you don't have to guess as to what your take home is going to be. This may look complicated because it's lined out, but I gave you a more complicated equation so you could get the most out of this illustration. So again, this is based off of a referral. It's not based off of a just straight transaction. Straight transaction, 
you see a lot more zeros here because everything would be in bulk as opposed to just um, proportionally sending uh, sending fees where they need to be. All right, so the stock comp. So if you are part of the agent equity program, that means that you as an EXP agent, you can purchase stock. You can use part of your commission to purchase stock at a 10% discount. So you can purchase five, you can allocate 5% of your commission to purchase stock at a 10% discount. So let me say that again, 5% of the commission. So 0 0.05 times that is going to equal that of my commission is going to purchase stock at a 10% discount. So this is based off of money, not based off of the amount of shares because the shares go up and down in price. This is based off of figures about of money. So the stock comp is 5% off of that. So that means that I'm going to buy $56.95 off based off of stock, right? So that's one. And then two, although you're not going to see right here, but I want to make sure that you know where it's calculated. If you had a transaction coordinator, which many agents, especially top producers at eXp do have transaction coordinators, the amount that, um, the, how they get paid at, at the, at the closing table and at the transaction is after this amount, after the net commissions. So it would be this minus this minus the transaction fee that would get you down, not transaction fee, transaction coordinator fee. If you had one, not all agents do, but a good amount of them do. Then you get down to the agent net payment down here. Now the payment delivery fee, I have not ever seen that be something. So it might be more state specific. So I'm here in Texas. So here in Texas, the title company just cuts. Uh, me a check or just direct deposit into my account if I give them my account for wire or whatever So this is really something as far as Texas agents are concerned. I don't ever see this be something so it might look different in other states. So I'll just um, I'll leave that up to, to the other states to, to cover but when it comes to payment delivery fee, I haven't seen this be anything so I'm assuming that it's more like a mailing fee just to get the check over to you I have no, um, I, I don't have a, any idea on that to be candid with you. As far as the agent net payment, that's what you can expect. Now, I know it sounds a bit complex. If this is the first time that you're going through something like this, it can be, but once you start, if you watch this over again, it's going to make a lot more sense because I had to plant a lot of scenarios in front of you and explain those, but watch this over again, the buyer commission base, that's very simple. It's a simple calculation and then how much you can expect. So again, I made this a more complicated equation for you because I'm taking a percentage off of a transaction. So I'm using this as a referral fee. So you could see how everything is done in proportion. So you see the risk management fee is $40 for the entire transaction, but I'm not responsible for the entire $40. The broker review fee is $25, but I'm not responsible for that as well in its entirety. So that helps as well. The only thing that is outside of this, because this is a transaction, this is an example of a real life example to, so you can um, make your calculations. The only thing that's excluded from this is the monthly fee at eXp. The monthly fee at eXp is $85 a month. Regardless if there's a transaction or not a transaction, you're paying $85 a month. So let's just say that this was your only one transaction for the month then you would subtract $85 and you made about $1,000 in that particular month. So just give me putting that in perspective. So don't, um, I don't want to get accused of, Hey, what about the monthly fee? Well, there you go. The monthly fee is $85, regardless if there's a transaction or not. That way you can account for everything in your commission check. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below. And also don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bells.